Ma'am, shall I start, Ma'am? Ah, oh, yes, Ma'am. We can. Sir, Professor, Sir. Professor M P Selvam, Sir. Wait, Uma, one second, Ma'am. Ah, oh, yes, Ma'am. Sir, uh, shall we start our program, Sir? Yeah, yeah, we can start. Ah, oh, yes, Sir. Thank you, Sir. Welcome, Sir. Yes, ma'am. Good morning, everyone. A welcome to today's speaker and the participants for the final day of this ACT sponsored six days online SCTP on mitigation of power quality issues in distributed generation systems using custom power devices phase two. I welcome you all. And now I welcome Dr. P. Usharani, madam. Professor and coordinator of this SCTV program to give a brief introduction about today's session speaker. Welcome, welcome you, ma'am. A very good morning to Anandal present here. I welcome uh, Dr. M. P. Selvam, sir, Associate Professor, NIT Trichy. Uh, thank you for accepting our invitation, sir. On behalf of our management, our college, and on my own behalf, I thank and welcome you, sir, for this sttp program uh, he, professor completed his be 1999 uh, from manonmanyam sundaranar university me power systems 2000 from rec trichy phd computer application in power systems in 2006 iit madras he is having uh, more than 20 years of uh, teaching experience uh, areas of interest uh, smart grid power quality distributed generation Distribution system analysis, power system operation and control, computer applications to power system analysis. Uh, professor is having sponsored research uh, projects uh, from various uh, concerns, DST, uh, Power Grid Corporation of India, uh, NAWE, National Institute of Wind Energy, Ministry of Electronics and Information Technology, four projects uh, professor has completed, PhD guidance uh, seven, doing five. I welcome you for this uh, today forenoon session. I welcome all the participants. I once again welcome you, sir. Uh, I hand over the, take the session, sir, please, sir, for the topic, uh, start com. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, good morning, all the participants. Uh, so, as per Madam introduction, you might have seen a lot of words on power system. Um, I am from the background of power system engineering. So, my talk will be uh, oriented towards the uh, power system, not in core power electronics of DSTATCOM. So, I am going to talk about the application of DSTATCOM in uh, power system, particularly on uh, wind generating power plants because the wind generators are keep on increasing right now uh, though we have power electronic interfaces uh, with individual wind generators or we may not have power electronic interface for every wind generators that depends on the uh, type of the generators which we are using so where the DSTATCOM can be applied, we will see. So I start the talk with an introduction to the uh, fundamentals of reactive power. W what happens if reactive power is not met, the reactive power is demand is not met in the system, then what are the methods to meet out the reactive power demand? how it affects the operation of wind power plant or the in integration of wind power plant in the system. Uh, what are the impacts which we can mitigate through application of DSTATCOM. That is what the core idea of this talk. I try to share my presentation.
hope you are able to see my slide yes sir okay. thank yes, you sir. Uh, so we go with the fundamental with a, a two bus system okay so here you are able to see a two bus connected through a transmission line where the resistance is neglected and at the two end i have two sources okay so let it be it is a, a source of electrical energy which will be able to provide both real power and reactive power because why i am insisting on that is all the energy sources are not providing both real and reactive for example you consider the distributed generators which we are speaking now pv will not be able to support reactive power wind will not be able to support reactive power it can provide only the real power if you use induction machine if we use a permanent magnet alternator then it can provide both real and reactive power so it depends upon the machine what we are choosing for the implementation so in this case study what is considered is the sources available at both the end of the transmission line are capable of supplying real power and reactive power so if you look at the equations governing the real and reactive power flow through this line is given here that is power p1 and q1 are measured at the sending end of the transmission line p2 and q2 are measured at the receiving end of the transmission line and this equation is a very fundamental equation uh, if you are from power system background definitely you will be uh, knowing that when you study stability analysis even otherwise we can easily derive it considering the voltage of this source is e1 at an angle delta and the receiving end voltage is e2 at an angle zero then if we find the current through this line and make a product we will get the real power and reactive power so you look at this if i keep the voltage of this machine and voltage of this machine as constant is it possible to keep the voltage constant yes of course if i use a synchronous machine definitely i can maintain the voltage at the terminals because i have field control so i can maintain a constant voltage at the output of the machine so i am maintaining a constant voltage and then x is the reactance of the transmission line where resistance also will be present but which is negligible and i am neglecting in this analysis so whether you neglect the resistance or do not neglect the resistance depends on the study what we are going to make in this study i am going to look into the voltages so definitely there will be a drop in both resistance and reactance but the reactance drop is dominating compared to the drop in the resistance so i am neglecting that otherwise if i do a power loss analysis and if i say that i am neglecting the resistance then it is meaningless right so whether you are going to neglect the resistance or not it depends upon the type of analysis what we are going to do here since the resistance is neglected you can see from these equations p1 and p2 are going to be same because there is no power loss real power loss so sending and real power will be equal to the receiving and real power which is p max sin delta delta is the angle difference between the sending end and the receiving end so if i adjust or this angle delta right i can increase the power flow in the transmission line this is the very fundamental thing if i increase the phase angle i can increase the power flow through the transmission line p max will not change because i am adjusting delta because p, p max depends on e1 e2 and x where delta is not there so for a given transmission line if you are operating at a given fixed voltage then the maximum power that can be transferred is fixed 
whether we are achieving that maximum power or we are transferring less than that depends upon the angle at which you are operating that is the capability of the machine if i am able to operate at delta equal to 90 degree then i will be able to transfer complete power p max i can utilize but it is never possible to operate at 90 degree because of the stability issues so mostly and under steady state condition the angle delta will remain in 30 to 40 degree if you have an additional mechanisms to enhance the stability of course we can increase this angle value up to 60 70 degree beyond that it will be very difficult but if you are if you are capable of operating the delta near 90 degree that is the best system where you are utilizing the capability of the complete transmission line here we are not utilizing when delta equal to 30 degree we are not utilizing the complete capability of the transmission line okay this is with respect to real power we will forget about that we are coming to a reactive power i said the machine at sending end as well as the machine at receiving end are capable of supplying reactive power okay so now i will see the mathematical equation reactive power at the sending end is given like this e1 square minus e1 e2 cos delta by x and the reactive power at the receiving end q2 is given as e1 e2 cos delta by x minus e2 square so here you have to look into the direction of the arrow mark what is given here here the direction of both the arrow marks are same okay so if i draw this arrow mark in the other direction then p2 will become negative q2 also will become negative at that time it becomes e2 square minus e1 e2 cos delta by x so for the further discussion not only the equation the direction of the arrow mark is also very important please remember so at the receiving end real power and reactive power goes into this bus in this bus i may connect a source or i may connect a load or this source itself may act as a load and source because if i have a synchronous machine at any point of time it can give me real power and it can absorb reactive power similarly it can absorb both real and reactive power and it may act as a motor right so assume that it is a synchronous machine connected there even in the synchronous motor mode i can operate uh, consuming real power and delivering reactive power leading power factor operation is possible in synchronous machine so synchronous machines are capable of operating in all four quadrant p positive p negative q positive q negative all the four quadrant it can operate right so the our interest is on reactive power in the system so i assume voltage at both the end are equal somehow i am maintaining that if i maintain i have to do something right without that i cannot maintain definitely because the sending end voltage is e1 when the current flows through x definitely there will be a drop then i have to maintain e e2 at the same value of e1 how can i maintain that definitely there is a drop still i can maintain if i have a synchronous machine because i have a um field control or i can have a tap changing transformer and adjust the tap setting and maintain the voltage at e2 so e1 e2 definitely i can maintain then of course th there may be a question how will the current flow when e1 and e2 are equal e1 and e2 are equal only in magnitude not instantaneously please understand e1 and e2 will have a phase angle difference that phase angle difference is sufficient enough to give the voltage difference instantaneously in the ac system so 
even with equal voltage there will be a current flow if it is an ac system now i write the equation for reactive power q1 will be if you look into the previous case q1 can be written as e1 square minus e1 e2 by x cos delta so what is e1 e2 by x that we have written as p max so this is e1 square by x minus p max cos delta so that can be simplified like this p max into 1 minus cos delta since e1 and e2 are equal otherwise i cannot write since e1 and e2 are equal i am able to write p max into 1 minus cos delta otherwise it will be e1 square by x minus p max cos delta okay and that is equal to minus q2 if i consider if i consider this direction because look at this this is p max by cos delta minus e2 square by x e2 square i can write e1 e2 because e1 and e2 are same that's why i am able to write p max cos delta minus 1 i consider that p max into 1 minus cos delta as q1 so q2 will become negative with the same direction of the arrow mark okay so what does it mean this negative sign as i said the negative sign indicates that there is a power flow from this bus into the transmission line as similar to q1 q1 the reactive power flows from this machine into the transmission line similarly q2 is negative means again the reactive power flows from this machine into the transmission line or from this bus into the transmission line i may have any other device to give me a reactive power that is flowing into the line so at both the ends reactive power is flowing into the line interestingly the real power flows from sending end to receiving end there is no change in the direction of real power this also you have to understand we can have we can have different directions for real and reactive power in the same conductor okay in the same conductor because real and reactive can be decoupled and you can see that real power flows in one direction and reactive power flows in the other direction though the ac current flows in the only only one direction it flows from this bus to this bus but the power flow may be different right okay so now i am considering a case study with numericals so i'm considering a delta of 30 degree which is practically possible one and i'm assuming x is equal to one per unit e1 e2 are one per unit and 0.9 per unit these are these are the conditions okay i am assuming e1 i'm maintaining at one per unit e2 i'm maintaining at 0.9 per unit you know per unit means say it is a percentage if it is a 10 kV system 0.9 per unit means it is a 9 kV if it is a 100 kV system 0.9 per unit means 90 kV right this is the assumed value okay now if i use these values and evaluate the value of q1 and q2 by utilizing these equations I will get Q1 as 0.22 per unit and Q2 as minus 0.03 per unit. So what does it indicate? You please tell me Q1, 0.22 per unit. 0.22 per unit of reactive power flows from this machine into this transmission line. 0.03 per unit of reactive power which is negative flows from this machine into this transmission line suppose if this sign would have been positive then i should say that 
0.22 per unit of reactive power flows from this machine into line and 0.03 per unit of reactive power flows from this line into this machine but that is not the case now 0.22 per unit flows into the line from sending end 0.03 per unit flows from the receiving end into the transmission line so this calculation itself indicates that the machine which is connected at the receiving end that means bus 2 is supplying 0.03 per unit to the line to maintain the voltage at 0.9 per unit if this is not a source then you cannot maintain this voltage that we will see in the next example so what i am saying next example if the source at bus 2 is not able to supply any reactive power it is not possible to supply reactive power from the source at the receiving end we will assume it is a pv system connected to the grid pv system connected to the grid or it is a induction machine connected to the grid which cannot supply reactive power right okay in that case what happens we will see so since it is not able to supply any reactive power i am mentioning that q2 equal to 0 because i don't have any other loads so definitely q2 is 0 it is not supplying any when i substitute this q2 equal to 0 and solve for e2 the voltage the voltage becomes 0.866 per unit bus 2 voltage drops down right so what is the observation from this case 1 and case 2 if you want to maintain the voltage of bus 2 at 0.9 per unit definitely there will be a reactive power source to give me a reactive power of 0 0.03 per unit at the receiving end if i do not have such a source then i will not be able to maintain the voltage at 0.9 definitely the voltage drops to 0.866 per unit so in that time if you calculate the value of q1 it becomes 0.25 per unit what is the value we got in case 1 that is 0.22 plus 0 0.03 if you, both of these reactive power flows into the line so when you add this it becomes 0.25 so source 1 supplies 0.25 per unit of reactive power in case 2 which is the reactive power demanded by the transmission line reactants so source 1 is supplying the complete reactive power requirement because of that a large current flows in this compared to case 1 and which leads to a drop in voltage right which leads to a drop in voltage the voltage becomes 0.866 per unit okay. next case 3 we will see i am adding a reactive power load okay. a reactive power load which draws a 0.1 per unit of reactive power and still I am assuming that the source which is available in this bus is incapable of delivering reactive power. It can give only real power. In this case, in this case, again I am calculating these values. Now I take Q2 as 0.1 per unit and solve for E2. I will get a value of 0.729 per unit which indicates that the voltage has dropped further earlier it is 0.866 now it has dropped to 0.7 why i have connected a reactive power load and the source near to this load is incapable of supplying reactive power so who will supply this source connected at bus one has to supply the source connected at bus 1 has to supply the reactive power demand of the transmission line and the reactive power demanded by this load. So the total reactive power 
should come from this generator or this source so that amount of reactive power travels through this line which causes more current flow compared to case 1 and case 2 and this extra current flow leads to an additional voltage drop and the voltage becomes 0.729 per unit so if you are keep on increasing the reactive power load at this point please remember i am saying reactive power load i will come back later if you keep on increasing more and more reactive power load at the receiving end your voltage will keep on reducing voltage will keep on reducing why the reactive power is going to come from the source this will happen for a long time but at one point of time the source which is connected at the sending end will exhaust its capability to supply reactive power because it is a anyway it is a physical machine let it be a synchronous machine though it is a, it is capable of supplying real and reactive power it has certain capability it cannot supply beyond its rating a 500 mea generator can supply only 500 mea so if you keep on increasing reactive power definitely the real power supply has to be reduced at one point of time if you want to maintain the voltage this is going to supply 500 mear then this the machine connected at bus 1 will not be able to supply any real power then why do you want a system i have to close everything right so i cannot make the machine 1 or the machine connected at bus 1 to supply 100 percentage reactive power of its capability so i can go up to how much real power i want to supply that real power i must supply because real power is priced reactive power is not priced it, in india of at least reactive power is not priced But of course there is a reactive power pricing which is also followed in many countries every generator which generates reactive power for that reactive power we have to pay so in india anyway reactive power is not priced so we will think about only the real power since real power is priced i will not be interested to lose my revenue by reducing real power so the machine one has certain capability to supply reactive power beyond that it cannot supply then what will happen if you keep on increasing reactive power load at the receiving end the voltage will keep on reducing at one point of time the voltage will come below 0.5 0.4 then we say that suddenly the voltage will come down to zero that is that phenomenon is called as voltage collapse in power system that is because of more and more reactive power demand in the system there are less sources to supply reactive power even if i have a sufficient source i should not have at only one end i should have at both the ends in a transmission line then only i will be able to maintain the voltage profile otherwise there will be a poor voltage incident will happen right so reactive power is very important at both the ends reactive power is very important at both the ends that another on study considering a little bigger system you consider a four bus system with two generators and three loads we consider this system and we will do a case study to look at few cases i will explain in the first case where the uh, bus 1 is injecting 186 megawatt and bus 4 318 megawatt is injected and 1.14 is the reactive power injected at bus 1 and 181.4 is the reactive power injected at the bus 4 assuming both are synchronous machines okay assuming both are synchronous machines 
and voltages are like this 1.98, 0.97, 1.02. Suddenly, I want to concentrate on renewable energy sources. I don't want re uh, synchronous machines. So I'll throw synchronous machine. I will connect only renewable energy because I'm interested only in real power generation. I'm not worried about reactive power. Nobody bothers about reactive power. Real power is the total demand is, I think, um, I think it is not mentioned here. Okay, from this we can find out. 186 plus 318, so it becomes uh, 190, 200, so around 500 megawatt is the demand, say in there is one 5 megawatt loss is there, so 500 megawatt load is available in this uh, system, so I am worried about to supply only that 500 megawatt load. So I want to concentrate on renewable, I want to go for PV system. I throw the synchronous machine out and I connect PV system for 318 uh, megawatt. Of course, now the uh, real power is met and still I, I could absorb that there is an increase in power loss compared to the first case, even after I'm replacing with PV and I'm getting an increase in power loss. Of course, the machine one is able to supply the loss, additional loss, but what I absorb is there is a loss of voltage. There is a huge drop in voltage profile. 0.98 has dropped to 0.93. 1.02 has dropped to 0.93, which is a critical situation. In power system, a voltage below 0.95 is considered to be an under voltage. You cannot have that. It is not a healthy system. So what happened? Why the voltage has reduced? It is because the Total reactive power requirement is, even though it is met, but it is coming from bus one. The reactive power has to travel through many transmission line, long transmission lines, which causes this voltage drop. So it is not a good system. Though I'm generating power from renewable, it is not a good system. According to a power system, engineer is concerned. Okay, economically good. 300 megawatt I'm generating from PV. Economically, it is good compared to a coal power plant. Environmentally, it is good. I am not polluting, but I'm not supplying a quality power to the system because there is a, I'm not supplying quality power because the voltage is less. I'm not operating an efficient system. The power loss has increased. So efficiency might have decreased. So in order to tackle this, we need to have a reactive power support at the buses where renewable energy integration is there. So reactive power support, if I provide SVS, I will come back to that word, static war uh, systems, SVS. So if I provide uh, static war systems, which is capable of providing 181 among the same reactive power, then I will bring back the voltages again. I will bring back the voltages again and the loss has come to the same value. And if I reduce the real power demand, demand is reduced, real power is also reduced. Even though I am able to, then I have to adjust the reactive power flow also, I can adjust. Because real power transfer is decreased, then reactive power requirement also will definitely decrease. So what you have to absorb from here is, I need to supply a reactive power at the sources where real power is capable of generating. That is one point. Second point, I need to have a reactive power source which is capable of adjusting its output. If the real power output changes, I need to adjust the reactive power also. Reactive power also. So I need to have a dynamically variable reactive power source, not a fixed reactive power source, because when a reactive power, the word comes into mind, immediately the device which comes to our mind is the capacitor. Capacitor is a reactive power source, of course, but it is not a dynamically variable source. It can provide you a reactive power of its rated capacity when the voltage is at 
rated value. Otherwise, even it cannot supply rated reactive power. If I buy a 1 MeAr capacitor band, it can supply 1 MeAr when the voltage across it is 1 per unit. If the voltage reduces, the reactive power output from the capacitor also will reduce. So it is not a good reactive power source which can be used for uh, critical situations when the voltages are too less. Slightly less, okay, again, but it is too less, then we cannot uh, use capacitor banks to improve the voltage profile to the required value. So I need a dynamically changing reactive power source. So people identified many compensating sources other than capacitor. The first one is SVC, static war compensator, static war compensator. So it is a war compensator, war means reactive power, all time we are reactive. Compensator is the demand is compensated by this. So it is called as a compensator. Actually, we don't call it as a source because you know that reactive power is not uh, used. It is not used. It is actually flowing between one component to other component. Right? That's why it is called as a compensator. We should not call it as a source. Even the real power, we, are, we should not call it as a show source and load in terms of power is okay but in terms of energy we cannot call it as a source or sink it is an energy conversion device generator is an energy conversion device motor is an energy conversion device that's all maybe in terms of power we say that generator is generating power and motor is consuming power that is also applicable only to real power reactive power is concerned the reactive power is continuously flowing between the source and load. It is nowhere it is consumed, nowhere it is converted into other form. But presence of reactive power is required for the function of motor, function of transmission line, for everything we need the presence of reactive power. Without that, you cannot operate the system. So SVC is one type of compensator and there is another type of compensator called TCSC and another type of compensator called static phase shifter. Anyway, we are not going in depth of that. These devices are called as first generation fax devices because they use thyristor, thyristor controlled compensator. Why I went for thyristor controlled compensator? Capacitor will not be able to provide a variable reactive power. That's why thyristor compensators are introduced where you can vary the firing angle of this thyristor and net impedance of the capacitor can be changed and variable reactive power can be obtained. Of course, you can get a variable output from the capacitor, but still it depends on the operating voltage. Reactive power output from capacitor is always V square by Xe. So it depends on voltage. If the voltage goes low, though it is static power compensator or a simple capacitor, the reactive power output is going to reduce because it depends on the voltage. So we need a reactive power compensator which does not depend on the voltage of the connected bus. Such a system should be developed that is possible with the help of voltage source converter that is possible with the help of voltage source because voltage source converters are capable of providing adjustable amplitude frequency and phase angle at its output so voltage what is voltage source converter it is an igbt based inverter right so if I have a constant DC voltage, that's why it is called as voltage source. I have a constant DC voltage. Then by changing the firing of this IGBT switches, which is present, which may be a six pulse bridge or 12 pulse bridge, which I'm not going into that because as I said, I'm not going to deal with the power electronics involved in that. 
if I have an IGBT inverter by changing the PWM scheme, by changing the PWM pulse width modulation, I will be able to get a AC voltage whose magnitude, that means amplitude, frequency and phase angle can be adjusted. Yes. How do I adjust that? If I adjust the modulation index, I can change the amplitude. If I change the frequency of the modulating wave, I can change the frequency of the output. If I change the phase angle between the carrier signal and the modulating signal, then I will be able to adjust the phase angle of the output. So it is possible to adjust phase angle, frequency and amplitude by PWM signals in a voltage source converter. That's why we will be able to get an adjustable. Okay. In what way this is related to the discussions which I had in the previous slides? I said reactive power, reactive power, reactive power. Now I am suddenly telling that I have a voltage source inverter where I will be able to adjust amplitude, frequency, phase angle. Okay. Why I am talking this? Yes. Now you have to relate this voltage source converter with the first fundamental equation what I have written. Q. The reactive power flowing in this line is dictated by the voltage of both the buses E1 and E2 and the angle between both the voltages. Right? Since the angle is predominantly affecting the real power, we fix the angle at a particular value so that real power is not adjusted. In that case, Q1 can, will be a function of difference between these two voltages. Okay? Q1 or the reactive power flow in this line will be a function of difference between the voltage magnitudes of these two buses. That means Q is proportional to E1 minus E2. If E2 is less than E1, yet more reactive power will flow from bus 1 to bus 2. If E1 is less than E2, more reactive power will flow from bus 2 to bus 1. If E1 and E2 are equal, then there won't be any reactive power flow at all from bus 1 to bus 2. Okay, so that is the case which we have to identify. Here you have to relate the voltage source converter as a synchronous machine. Right? Synchronous machine, what is synchronous machine? It is a synchronous machine, it is a rotating machine where you will be able to adjust its frequency, phase angle and magnitude. By adjusting the speed, you can vary the frequency of output. By varying the excitation system, we will be able to adjust the magnitude of the voltage. Of course, phase angle also can be adjusted if you compare with another system. Always uh, the voltage of the load point will be having a less angle than the internal angle of a synchronous machine. If it is a, a grid connected synchronous machine, then the machine will have an internal angle which is called as a load angle in synchronous machine which will be higher than the grid phase. Then only you will have a real power flow as I said. So I am going to replace this machine with the help of that voltage source inverter. Then I will be able to get all the functionality as a synchronous machine. So this voltage source converter, the invention of voltage source converter has changed uh, the uh, popularity of power electronics into power system. So nowadays, without this power electronic devices, we will not be able to see power system. Earlier power system means only the transmission lines and generators, but not now. Now we have to consider a lot of voltage source inverters operating in the system also. So a power system engineer also should understand the behavior of VSE. He could not say that I am 
power system engineer so i will not worry about psc as i said yes of course we can say as a power system engineer i should know how a bsc is operating that is sufficient for me for operating a power system i don't want how a bsc is built that is the work of power electronics engineer there where we have to distinguish power system engineer and power electronics engineer how he builds a bsi that is not now my business let him do it let him use igbt or thyristor or whatever he wants let him use it but finally i want a device with this functionality that i call it as a voltage source inverter this box i need and i want this functionality adjustable amplitude frequency and phase angle i will buy that box and use it for my application that is the use of a power system engineer so this voltage source inverter if you use for reactive power exchange alone then it is called as statcom statcom it is otherwise called as second generation fax devices it is otherwise called as second generation fax device first generation fax device is only made of thyristor based system second generation fax devices or voltage source inverter based system so here you are able to adjust the reactive power independent of the voltage at which it is connected that we will see here so now i have a voltage source inverter right and this is not thyristor it is a gto gate turn off thyristor gto so gate turn off device can operate as an igbt which is a self commutating device not like for uh, thyristor which is a forced commutation device so i can use a gto or i can use an igbt depending upon the power level so it is a voltage source inverter which i have shown here in this slide a voltage source inverter which is connected to the bus through a transformer so this is a bus there is a transformer and i can consider this is also an another bus where this is voltage source inverter is connected so output of the voltage source output terminals of the voltage source inverter can be considered as a bus so this bus voltage is vbr and this bus voltage is vl which is the bus voltage and in between i have a transformer so a normal transformer can be modeled as a reactance of course uh, i used to ask my this question to my students when you learn second year b tech or b you learn transformer equivalent circuit of a transformer right where you will draw uh, leakage reactance primary resistance then core resistance magnetizing reactance then an ideal transformer followed by leakage reactance then leakage resistance all those things so many components equivalent circuit of a transformer in second year then when we move to seventh semester or sixth semester wherever it is when you study power system analysis subject and the teacher will tell you uh, teacher will draw a transformer with a simple reactance he will say power system analysis teacher used to say this is transformer reactance is a transformer but second year teacher might have taught you a very big circuit for an equivalent circuit of a transformer why there is a change because you are moved from second year to uh, final year there is a change in the equivalent circuit of a transformer itself like the behavior of the student second year if you see suppose if you teach second year and final year of course you we can notice that second year you draw the equivalent circuit of the transformer students will have a good notebook and they will draw it and when i move to final year and if i draw something single line diagram on the board nobody will draw the student behavior change okay sir we will study so the behavior is changing i used to ask this question like that transformer equivalent circuit also getting reduced so i will put this question to you you can think and answer me at the end of the lecture why in electrical machines when you study the equivalent circuit we are drawing so many components 
the same thing when i move it to power system analysis and throwing all the components simply drawing a reactants alone as a transformer if you um, study uh, per unit system or if you teach reactants diagram or single line diagram of a power system let it be a star delta transformer or a star star transformer or whatever it is finally we will mention as a reactants right so you you can think and find out the reason why is that case okay so this transformer can be represented by assembled reactants and so now what i get i'll get a bus i'll get a reactants then another bus that is what i'm talking from my first slide itself right i have a bus i have a reactants and i have a bus this side there is a source which is a large grid and other side i have a source which is nothing but a voltage source converter so this two bus system we can match with a statcom connected system so here what we learned when you adjust the voltage difference will be there if there is any reactive power flow is not there so in that in the in reverse you have to understand that if you want to make a reactive power flow then you need to have a voltage difference right so here you can see that first case this is 1 per unit this is 0.9 per unit so reactive power 0.22 per unit reactive power flows from here 0.03 flows from here in the second case this is 1 per unit this is 0.86 per, per unit so now 0.25 per unit of reactive power flows in this line in the third case i increased the voltage difference then the reactive power flow is also increasing right so two point you have to think in in a system if the reactive power flow is increasing then voltage will drop in other words if i want to supply reactive power i have to purposefully create voltage difference that's all you have to remember so now i'll go to the statcom so this is the voltage source inverter this is the system now i want to supply reactive power into the system then i should have a voltage at the terminals of the vsc higher than this bus voltage then there will be a reactive power flow to the system if the bus voltage is higher than vsc terminal voltage reactive power flow will be from grid to the vsc now it is going to act as a inductor first case it is going to act as a capacitor reactive power is flowing from vsc to the grid if i want reactive power to flow from vsc to the grid then this voltage should be higher if i want to absorb reactive power vsc voltage should be less so a vsc can absorb reactive power as well as supply reactive power or in other words i can say it can operate in leading power factor mode or lagging power factor mode so i can compare this with the synchronous machine synchronous machine can operate in leading reactive power mode as well as lag lagging power factor mode same thing a vsc also can do that's why it is called as synchronous compensator okay there it is a synchronous condenser this is synchronous compensator that is synchronous compensator is a, a synchronous condenser is a rotating one this synchronous compensator is a static one that is that that's why it is called as static synchronous compensator in short it is called as statcom static synchronous compensator it is called as statcom it can operate in both lagging mode and leading mode of course a synchronous machine can operate in four quadrant i said it can supply real power it can absorb real power similarly it can supply reactive power and it can absorb reactive power similarly this voltage source converter also can do it can now i explain that it can operate in both leading mode and lagging mode similarly it can operate in real power also it can supply it can absorb reactive power provided if we have a proper uh, source or load at this point if i have a real power source 
I can make real power to flow through this transformer into the grid. What I need? I need a higher phase angle at this point. If this voltage is leading this voltage, real power will flow. If this voltage is lagging the grid voltage, then real power will flow into VSC. Now it, it is going to act as a rectifier. So at the DC side, I need to have a, a load or a battery to store this. Right? So a static synchronous compensator, in short, STATCOM, can also operate in four quadrants similar to synchronous machine. Only the difference is it is a static one. So this is a simple uh, comparison of this. I have a, a STATCOM representation. This is the grid bus which is given here. And this is the reactance of the transformer. And then I have a voltage source converter which can be represented as a synchronous machine, right? So this can operate in both leading mode and lagging mode. So see here inductive operation. If the STATCOM voltage is less than the bus voltage, then uh, it will act as an inductive inductor. It absorbs reactive power. If the STATCOM voltage is more than the bus voltage, then it acts as a capacitor. It gives you reactive power. Okay. So this operation will happen only if there is a presence of this reactance. Otherwise, it will not happen. Actually, though you have a VSC, if you connect this VSC directly this to this node, then nothing will happen. You have to close. Actually, the power electronics is playing the role. The power electronics alone cannot do this job. If you do not have this transformer or a reactance, which may call it as a coupling reactance, you cannot achieve this. You find any uh, paper or book which connects this device directly to this bus. It cannot do because this voltage and this voltage will become same when you directly connect it. When these two voltages are instantaneously same, then there cannot be any reactive power flow. That's why you need a reactance in between. Of course, you can have a resistance also. Why don't we have resistance? Because the resistance, there will be a power loss. So we will not prefer resistance, we will prefer reactants. Resist, definitely that reactants also will have certain amount of resistance. So there will be a power loss. Of course, we have to calculate that power loss also uh, taken into consideration when you design the components. Uh, for analysis, we neglect that it is a resistance-less reactants. Okay, so without this reactants, STATCOM cannot work. STATCOM means not only this power electronic part, it includes this transformer also. Okay. So this thing, mostly we will be able to control this real and reactive power from this machine using a DQ transformation. I'm not going in depth of that because I think you might have seen uh, DQ transformation in uh, several previous lectures. So, voltage source converter can be operated with DQ transformation. So why we go for DQ transformation? We will be able to control real and reactive power independently. That is what my objective. Right? If I control both together, then it is not a static compensator. You look at the synchronous machine. By adjusting excitation system, you will be able to control the voltage. By adjusting the speed, you can control the frequency, you can control the real power output. You increase your prime over, your speed will increase, your real power output will increase. Even there, there is a coupling. Speed increases, your voltage also will increase. Then you have to adjust the excitation system. But in voltage source converter, when you go for a DQ transformation, the real and reactive power can be controlled independently as in a DC machine as a DC machine, armature control and field control. DC machine you might have studied. Field control will not affect armature operation. Armature control will not affect the operation of the field. In that way, 
we can bring a control in this. So I'm not going in depth of this mathematical equations, which several professors might have uh, covered for you. So ID and IQ. IQ can be written in terms of Q, reactive power, and ID can be written in terms of real power. So if I want to control real power, I have to control ID. If I want to control reactive power, I have to control uh, IQ. Is a convention. Okay. So I, I'll show some pictures alone for an understanding purpose. So this uh, calculation, um, ABC2 DQ transformation has an intermediate transformation called alpha beta that we will see how the waveform looks like. So here the top waveform is the voltage, three phase voltage. When I convert it into alpha beta frame, it becomes a two phase, but both of them are uh, quadrature to each other. That means there is a 90 degree phase displacement. Here, 120 degree phase displacement, when this is converted to alpha beta, there is a 90 degree phase displacement. And I am assuming that there is a three phase current which is having a phase difference of 45 degree with respect to the voltage waveform. And the current I also am converting it into alpha beta and I am getting the current in quadrature, alpha and beta. Okay. Now I am converting this alpha beta into dq. See that a three phase sinusoidal current when it is converted into dq component, I have a straight line. It became dc. And both the straight lines are not crossing anywhere. So I have, since the angle is taken as 45 degree, I have equal value of real power and reactive power. So green is the real power and this purple is reactive power. Green is the real power and purple is the reactive power. Since it is 45 degree lagging, the reactive power become negative. It means that the power is consumed by the load. It is a lagging reactive power. It is an inductive mode. If I have a leading operation, then we can see that here both of them merges. So ID and IQ purple and green become same because here the real power and reactive power values are same angle is 45 degree. If I take an another angle, we can see the positive value of Q. Yeah, see here. And 45 degree lagging, VDQ and IDQ. So this is VDQ and this is the ID and this is IQ for a lagging current. And this, of course, this DQ transformation helps even with uh, uh, even with the harmonic component, even with harmonic components, right? So I have a third harmonic component in this current. Then the third harmonic component will get replicated in this. When you do a DQ transformation, there will be a third component which is called as B zero zero sequence component. Okay. So you can see here this is D component and the purple is the Q component and we have a third harmonics so third harmonics is reflected in the zero sequence component and similarly other type of harmonics also can be identified in the D and Q component so here I have fifth harmonics presence of fifth harmonics which is reflected in the D and Q components as a sinusoidal oscillation. So fifth harmonic we can be identified with uh, the with the presence of tenth harmonic component in this. I mean double frequency component present in this that indicates that there is a fifth harmonic presence, right? So higher order harmonics presence of higher order harmonics in the D and Q component will say that there is a presence of harmonics in the actual waveform. The sinusoidal component of the C zero sequence current will say that there is a third order harmonic present. Three, nine, fifteenth harmonics are present. Third order harmonics. 
Th this is why the DQ component is used in the analysis. Okay. Anyway, harmonics is not our discussion. We will find uh, a three phase current can be converted into DQ frame where we will be able to decouple the active part and reactive part. Of course, active part is not my botheration. Only the reactive part is my botheration. How much reactive current is required by the load should be provided by the compensator. That is what the idea. So this is a STATCOM connected system. Uh, STATCOM connected system. You can see that this is a source or a grid, whatever it is, you can say. This is the transmission line and which is feeding a linear load or a load and I have a non-linear load which draws a harmonic component of the current and the point at which the load is connected is called as point of common coupling where I want to connect a STATCOM since it is used in a small distribution system it is called as D STATCOM. STATCOM and D STATCOM are not different in terms of functionality both of them are same only thing STATCOM is used in transmission system to control power flow in the line. This STATCOM is used in the distribution system to compensate the lagging power factor of the loads. This STATCOM means distribution STATCOM. Functionality wise both are same. The rating wise this will be different. This will have a lower rating compared to the STATCOM which is used in the transmission system. So now this is a STATCOM voltage source inverter based on IGBT switches or GTU. That's why nothing is mentioned here. A switch is shown. So now by operating this, I will be able to inject reactive power or absorb reactive power in the system. So if I inject reactive power, power factor at this point will be improved. Of course, I can do this with the help of capacitor. As I said, capacitor will be able to provide compensation, fixed value of reactive power, and it can be used only when the voltage is at rated voltage, it can provide the required reactive power. But this can provide me a reactive power, which is, a, which, is which can be a variable one. If these loads are variable in nature, I, I need a variable reactive power source. This STATCOM can be operated as a variable reactive power source to supply reactive power. So the control is going to be like this. I will take the load current drawn by the load. I will do ABC to D, I mean ABC to DQ transformation. I get D component and Q component. So for doing this, we need a reference. The reference will be taken from the grid voltage, right? It will be taken from the grid voltage. I will have D component and Q component. Then uh, here uh, I will have that DC voltage I have to maintain because this DC is a capacitor. Capacitor voltage I have to maintain. To maintain capacitor voltage, I can draw a little bit of real power from the system to charge the capacitor. So that is included in this loop. And if you see here, ID, ID component, I am passing through a low pass filter to find out what is the constant DC quantity. The remaining one is the oscillating component, which indicates that the presence of harmonics. If there is no harmonics, then no problem. I need not worry about the D component. The Q component is the complete Q component, the reactive power drawn by the load, as well as the harmonic component, which is present in the uh, Q component has to be supplied by the D statcom. So this Q component is completely taken. Again, I am doing DQ to alpha beta, then alpha beta to ABC, then that ABC value, which is called as the reference current for the D statcom. Reference current for the D statcom. Then I can apply any kind of current control. PWM current control or hysteresis current control, a sliding mode current control, whatever it is, I will be able to follow this reference current. That's why I said I'm not worried about what type of control is used in the power electronic system. That let a power electronic engineer decide which is the 
best switching technology for IGBT based system. I want this much reactive power. I will generate this reference, give it to this, any control, let him apply, give me the reactive power required. So in order to implement that, since it needs a lot of computation and high frequency operation, we can go for a FPGA implementation for this complete control. So you can see that all the analog current analog voltage are measured and converted into D DC quantities using ADC and um, this digital, I'm sorry, analog to digital. So it, they converted into digital quantities and this digital quantities are compared and all these mathematical operations are done in this block and it generates the uh, digital value of the reference current the digital value of the reference current and digital value of the actual current is also given and based on the uh, control whatever we are using either pwm control or hysteresis control or sliding mode control i will be able to get the firing pulses for igbt that firing pulses will be given to the gate driver the gate driver will drive the actual igbt present in the voltage source inverter and i will get the reactive power required. So here this is the uh, practical implementation in the laboratory is shown here. This is the FPGA board, this is the voltage source inverter, these are R and L uh, resistance and reactants representing the load and non-linear load as well as any filters required for filtering out the high frequency components. So I'm showing here some output waveforms. Uh, which is self-explanatory. If I, this is for linear and non-linear load. So I have a voltage and look at the current before connecting d com. Then after connecting d com, it becomes sinusoidal as well as in phase with the voltage. So the power factor is improving. THD is also getting reduced from 11 to 2.6. So linear and non-linear load where you need the active power supply as well as the harmonic current can also be mitigated with the help of this type of the control required is same whether you need reactive power compensation or a harmonic compensation the loop involved is only this similarly an rc load non-linear rc load and the dynamic compensation see dynamic compensation means the See, you can, you can see here, the load current is changing, right? The load current, the magnitude is changing. That is the dynamic compensation. The load current magnitude is changing. As well as suddenly it is changing, whether the um, voltage source converter is capable of giving reactive power for this sudden change. Yes, of course, it is capable of responding. Within off cycle, it is responding and it is making the wave shape your sign yeah. where it is used mostly in the wind forms with SEIG squirrel cage induction machine based wind forms we can use this statcom for compensating reactive power why you need an SEIG based system you need reactive power compensation because it is a squirrel cage based induction machine so it is going to give you real power when the wind speed is higher than the cutting speed. Definitely it is going to give you real power. But this induction machines are low with respect to reactive power is concerned. It draws more and more reactive power. Though it is capable of supplying real power through the wind turbine, but they draw reactive power to set up the magnetic flux because it is basically it is an induction machine. So if you keep on increasing more and more, more and more uh, real uh, wind, wind forms with squirrel cage induction machines, then there will be a problem of reactive power demand for the grid. Grid has to supply more and more reactive power for these wind forms. If the grid is not able to supply, then the voltages will go down. So they are asked to have 
their own reactive power compensating devices so mostly they go for capacitor based reactive power compensating devices which will not be able to provide dynamic reactive power compensation so where we can go for statcom it is it need not be connected to a single machine you can connect to a number of machines connected together i mean for a wind farm we can have a eh, these state com for a single wind farm we can have a eh, state com so see here uh, this is a normal operation and this you can see here so this is the voltage source and current and this is the injected current by the state com so what you have to see important is this graph power graph see real power is this is negative indicates that from the machine power is going into the grid that's why this is negative reactive power from the grid it draws then it is assumed to be positive so here you can see that reactive power drawn from the grid is zero because statcom is supplying even though there is a variation in power statcom is able to supply the re required reactive power and it maintains unity power factor at the connection points at this point the wind speed increases because of increase in wind speed the real power output also increases as real power output increases the reactive power demanded by the machine also will increase that by as a statement now you take it otherwise you need to go through an analysis to understand what is happening when you increase your react real power draw from the machine uh, the reactive power demand also will increase because it depends on the speed if the speed increases the reactive power required by the machine also will increase there is a proof uh, which can be referred in the reference papers so as real power output increases reactive power output is reactive power requirement also will increase which should be provided by the statcom see here the current is also increasing this current is the current of the statcom so since the reactive power is supplied by statcom reactive power drawn from the grid remains zero uh, which can be experimentally also proved here you can see that there is a increase in source current increase in source current indicates that there is a increase in real power generation it is and it is always in phase with the voltage in phase means here you can see out of phase 180 degree out of phase that means current is flowing from the machine to the grid if the current from the grid if the current flows into the machine then it will be in phase since current is flowing from the machine to the grid it is completely out of phase but this 180 degree out of phase it indicates that only the real power flows so here the magnitude of the current is very small as time increases it is increasing that indicates that wind speed has increased so real power output is also increased during that time it needs more reactive power that reactive power is supplied by the statcom which can, which is evident from the increase in the magnitude of the injected current so this can you can see that you vary the speed vary the speed then you can see that there is an increase in real power as speed increases real power also will increase that is the property of synchronous uh, induction machine based wind farms as real power increases reactive power is also increasing so this is the q demand without statcom q demanded from the machine q demanded from the grid right so if you want to generate 1 1.2 kilowatt you have to supply nearly 1 kilowatt 1 kilowatt so 1 per unit if you want to generate we need to supply 1 kV that depends on the machine as a thumb rule one per unit real power output from the machine requires nearly 0.5 to 0.6 per unit of reactive power so if you provide that by the statcom then 
see here the statcom is providing that reactive power required by the machine so from the grid we are not drawing anything so power factor will be improved so grid the burden on the grid is getting reduced since you are reducing the burden on the grid the voltage profile of the grid will be better otherwise the voltage profile will go down here i am talking in terms of watt because the experiment is taken in the laboratory in the actual field it will be in megawatt right tamil nadu wind, wind, wind capacity is around 8000 megawatt so in order to generate 8000 megawatt approximately you have to supply 6000 mvar from where you will supply 6000 mvar it will be very difficult so the wind operators are requested to have their own capacitor compensation otherwise they will be punished but the capacitor will not be able to provide complete compensation when the voltage goes low so when the voltage goes low capacitor will not be able to provide compensation so the machine tries to draw from the grid so grid is getting additional burden in order to avoid that we can go with the state com then another one case study which i would like to show is there is a case with induction machine and synchronous machine put together this is the actual grid scenario right induction machine and synchronous machine put together so here i am considering only squirrel cage machines i am not considering a doubly fed induction machine or permanent magnet uh, alternator based wind turbines that is different with respect with that also you need a statcom operation which can be obtained from the power converter available with the machine itself double fed induction machine will have power converters permanent magnet and alternator will have power converter that power converter can be put in partially in statcom mode and you can get the reactive power support so here i am not talking about such kind of machine it is only based on squirrel cage induction machine so now i have a squirrel cage induction machine and synchronous machines connected together so there is a fault power system fault which are uh, very frequently happening incident so there is a fault whenever there is a fault there will be a protective relay the protective relay will sense the occurrence of the fault and it will try to open these two circuit breakers to clear the fault this happens say within this seconds at point 6 second the fault occurs and around 2 second or just before 2 second the circuit breaker opens and the fault is cleared so meantime the voltage of this bus goes down because there is a three phase short circuit fault so even after the fault is cleared this bus voltage will not come back to the original value definitely it will not come because one transmission line is taken out of service so this voltage will not come back to the original value so this is the phenomena which is happening when there is a fault with respect to system voltage is concerned we will see what is happening to this machine i will put all the graph okay so when the system is healthy and the voltage is 1 per unit the machine is operating just above synchronous speed and it is delivering real power to the system of 1 per unit real power to the grid this induction machine and it is drawing around 0.6 per unit of reactive power from the grid okay system is healthy it is operating suddenly there is a fault this voltage drops as soon as the voltage drops the active power generation becomes zero why the active power generation becomes zero since the voltage has dropped there is no voltage to maintain a magnetic flux in the machine so there is no reactive power flow into the machine reactive power becomes zero because this voltage has dropped to a very low value it cannot provide reactive power since it cannot provide reactive power to set up the magnetic flux there is no magnetic flux available so when there is no magnetic flux available 
the electromagnetic torque becomes zero. So there is a torque mismatch between the mechanical torque and an electromagnetic torque. Because of this mismatch, the rotor gets accelerated and the rotor speed is increasing continuously. The rotor speed is increasing continuously. So what happens even after clearing the fault, even after clearing the fault, the voltage comes back to 0.8 per unit. But during that time, the machine speed has gone enormously. This machine, squirrel cage machine, is called as a fixed speed generator. It cannot operate beyond certain slip. It will keep on uh, running, but it won't provide any real power. Again, to understand that, we have to go to the top slip characteristics of the squirrel cage induction machine. We will not touch upon here. A squirrel cage induction machine can operate only within a narrow slit. Though we say that above synchronous speed, it acts as a generator, you cannot operate at a 1500 RPM machine into 1600 RPM. It won't generate any real power. Right? So here the speed increases enormously because of that reactive power consumption increases. And because though the speed is more, it cannot supply any active power to the grid. So simply the machine will run, there is no active power, only it draws a reactive power to the system, reactive power from the system. So it is a burden to the grid. And the machine speed is going enormously because of that, the mechanical damage will happen. So we have to switch off the machines, no other way. Wind is available, but I am, I am unable to operate the system. I have to switch off. Again, I have to bring back the system to the normal condition and connect it. So this happened because of a fault which present in the system for say 0 0.6 to 1 second, 0 0.4 seconds. Because of that, I have to switch off the wind turbine. Again, I have to connect. So meantime, the power system will face deficiency in real power too, because it is supplying one per unit of real power. Now that is lost. One per unit, in number it may be less, one per unit. But in actual value, if you see that maybe 100 megawatt, 200 megawatt, 300 megawatt, or even 500 megawatt system. So that power loss will lead to other issues in the system. So what is to be avoided? We have to avoid the increase in speed and the machine should not get disconnected from the system. That is what we have to do. That is possible with the help of Stedcom. So this phenomenon is called as rotor speed stability. It is not a rotor angle stability. It is called as rotor speed stability. So how do I achieve that? I should reduce mechanical input during the fault period, which is not possible. It is not a hydro turbine. It is not a thermal steam turbine. I cannot control input. It's a wind turbine. I cannot control it. It's very difficult. Then how to reduce mechanical input if I would like to reduce? Then I have to go to extract very less energy from the wind. How to extract less energy from the wind? I have to do a control on wind turbine. Yes, of course, there is a uh, method called pitch control, which can control the mechanical energy extracted from the wind. But the fault duration is very less. Within that time, activating the pitch control is tedious. It cannot be done. So we have to deal with only the electromagnetic torque. So how to tackle the electromagnetic torque? So we will forget about the improvement in mechanical torque. We will leave it. We can increase the electromagnetic torque. In order to increase the electromagnetic torque, I have to go with magnetization. Right. So how to provide magnetization? I need to provide sufficient reactive power. So sufficient reactive power should be given with reduced terminal voltage. Here, that is what the important. Of course, every wind turbine will be provided with capacitor bank. Capacitor bank can provide reactive power only at the rated voltage. If the voltage goes down, reactive power output from the capacitor also will come down. Here I need more reactive power at reduced terminal voltage. That is possible with the help of STATCOM. So may, I can maintain the terminal voltage by injecting reactive power so that less reactive power is 
demanded by the machine or otherwise i can use dvr also dynamic voltage regulator now i am going to talk about only the statcom application right so i have considered a 3.5 megawatt wind turbines so total output is 1.5 megawatt these are the other details and every wind turbine is provided with 38 kvr power supply c 500 megawatt is provided with 38 kvr reactive power which is required to supply the reactive power during the starting alone uh, other than that it is not provided so i am going to give you show you the slides under normal operation and abnormal operation okay, then i will complete the lecture but i have an important meeting which is scheduled at 11:30 i have to join so i will uh, conclude with this case study a normal operation uh, in form output you can see that there is a p and there is a q right this is p the power output is just above 1.5 megawatt that is the rated power output i'm sorry it's slightly less than 1.5 megawatt this is one per unit and this is 1.5 the graph is here so less than 1.5 megawatt the total rating is 1.5 megawatt that is at rated wind velocity if the wind velocity is less the output is going to be less so during that time it draws very less quantity of reactive power so no problem at all the capacitor what is available is able to supply that reactive power then there is a grid disturbance which is happening at fourth second and the fault is cleared at 0.05 second Uh, in that we consider two case studies 0.05 second fault clearance 0.5 second fault clearance 0.05 second if the fault is cleared then no problem at all i am able to supply same real power and i am able to supply same real power and the reactive power requirement is also very less the capacitor is sufficient to supply the reactive power but suppose the fault clearing time is 0.5 second because 0.05 second is very very ambitious right 0.05 second sometimes the sensing time of the relay and circuit breaker operating time may be slightly higher and it may not be able to provide the proper trip signal within this time 0.05 second means within within three cycles it has to work of course fast acting circuit breakers are available and the relays are able to sense but that high efficient protection systems are used only in transmission lines not in the distribution systems where the relays will have certain time to sense and circuit breaker has to operate so definitely it takes little more time even it operates at 10 cycles it takes 0.2 seconds so here i have considered the worst case 0.5 second so definitely within 0.5 second see this is 1 second within 0.5 second the fault will be cleared but still you if you see this within that time period the real power uh, as soon as the fault happen the real power goes zero the rea reactive power is enormously increasing real power goes zero the black one is the real power blue one is the reactive power black is real blue is reactive so the real power goes zero because mean time there is no magnetization speed increases and machine cannot generate reactive power demand is also keep on increasing even after clearing the fault there is a reactive power demand because the machine speed is high and it is not able to supply any real power so what i have to do i have to go with the d statcom i connect the d statcom at that point here i am going to connect the d statcom so if i connect the d statcom at this node where the wind power plant is available already i have a transformer so i can use same transformer or i can connect here through another transformer then you see here 
we will see what happens to the rotor speed, reactive power and real power. So without STATCOM, this is the case. As soon as the fault happens at 4 seconds, the rotor speed keeps on increasing. And I'm clearing the fault at this point. Uh, fault is cleared at 4.5 seconds. Fault is cleared at 4.5 seconds. 0.5 second, right? 4.5 second. After that, the rotor speed is getting reduced, but it is not coming back to the original value. That's why it is called as rotor speed stability. So 0.5 second, though, even though the fault is clear, rotor speed is not coming back. And look at this. This is with statcom. So the speed is increasing as soon as the fault occurs. But the increase in speed is less compared to this case. Here it is going enormously, which cannot be practically possible. Practically, there will be a mechanical damage. But here, the speed increases slightly. One point, from one per unit, it goes to 1.02, 1.06, that's all. Right? So this is practically permissible speed change. Only 6 percentage change. It is permitted, okay? So, in this, then... You, you see that after the fault is cleared, the increase in speed decreases and comes back to the original value. So, that is possible with the help of STATCOM. How it is happening? Because of the injection of reactive power. So, real power we can see. The red one is without the state comp, blue one is with the state comp. Before fault, blue and red are aligning themselves and during fault, without the state comp, the red becomes zero. It means that there is no real power output, but with state comp, the real power oscillates, but it gets settled. After clearing the fault, I am able to get such an amount of real power and see the reactive power also we have to have a reactive power at this point see with this statcom the reactive power requirement is brought back to the original value which is nearly zero otherwise there is a reactive power requirement of around minus 7 kVA means from the grid it is going to take this much kVA then the grid will become completely burdened and the voltage collapse may occur. Right? So that this reduction in reactive power demand after clearing fault as well as the machine will be connected to the system without any uh, disturbance will be achieved with the help of this telecom. Of course there is an oscillation in real power which should be reduced with sophisticated control. We have to reduce the oscillations in the real power as well as in the reactive power. So this, you can see the grid voltage without the statcom and with statcom. Without statcom, the grid voltage is not coming back to the original value, but with the statcom, the grid voltage comes back to the original value after clearing the fault. And similarly, at PCC also. And this much amount of reactive power is injected by the DSTATCOM during the grid fault. When the fault is present, this much reactive power is supplied by the DSTATCOM. And so another case study 3 is also available where you can have a microgrid setup through which we can supply power to the system which uh, due to time limit, I will stop at this point. And if you have any queries, I am happy to answer one or two queries right now and later we can have any any doubt can be emailed to me if you have and I would like to acknowledge my doctoral students for doing uh, several simulations and experimental studies on DSTATCOM with wind form as well as solar park. I would like to mention Dr. Srinath, Dr. Venkat Roman and Dr. Deepan Chakravarti who had graduated from our institute uh, working on the STATCOM and Ms. Suganya and Mr. Arjun who are helping me do a lot of simulation 
and they are working right now for obtaining their phd i should thank all of them for the successful work which made me to present in front of you so thank you professor for your valuable knowledge sharing session from the basics of power system you have delivered mental results uh, i thank you very much even though you have meeting uh, as per schedule you came and delivered sir thank you very much for your cooperation sir support thank you madam thank you sir uh, kindly participants kindly any questions ma ma'am yes ma'am uh, from ashwini kumar sir can i uh, tell, i mean can i read the questions from the participant side sir yeah one or two questions i can take now yes sir only two uh, two questions have been posted from the participant side sir from ashwini yes. kumar uh, uh, sir where are statcom in, installed near the generation center or load uh, it is uh, installed at load centers not in the generating center in the power system is concerned if you have uh, it should be connected in a substation if it is a wind farm then we should have at the wind farm where where we will have a small substation to step up the wind farm voltage to system voltage at that point we, we need to connect the statcom okay thank you sir and one more question sir from yes. same ashwini kumar um, is that d statcom are used at every power station like thermal hydro nuclear etc no no it is not used in every generating stations because as i said thermal hydro and nuclear they use synchronous machines so wherever you use synchronous machine synchronous machine itself is capable of supplying reactive power so you don't want statcom statcom is required whenever you have a source which is uh, not capable of supplying reactive power like wind turbines like solar you need to go for a statcom and nowadays with uh, wind farm and uh, solar system we are using inverters uh, those inverters can be operated in the statcom mode to supply reactive power okay thank you sir thank you very much sir uh, that's it sir thank you ma'am uh, sir good morning to everyone with a great pleasure i thank professor dr mp selvan sir for delivering lecture on statcom and its applications it was really very informative and enlightening session sir thank you very much for this wonderful session sir sir thank you once again sir and thank we also received a lot of appreciations from the participant side which is has just been posted in the chat box thank, thank you very you. much sir thank you thank you thank you sir thank you madam thank you thank you sir So now I can leave, right, madam? Ah, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. I thank all the participants for patient listening. Thank you.